welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name is Jillian and today I'm going to be doing my daughter Madison's autism update. So I always get a lot of questions on my daughter and her autism journey and where she is now versus where she was when she was first diagnosed and just a lot of questions. So I did ask you guys in a vote if you guys would like me just to do a sit down video letting you guys know where she is in her update. And everyone said yes, so I asked you guys that probably about a week ago, so I'm just now getting around to sitting down to film this video for you guys. And if you are a new subscriber, you may not know that I do have a daughter who is on the autism spectrum disorder. She is currently four and a half years old. So just in case you didn't know, now you know, I am going to go down a list of things that I want to share with you guys. If I keep on looking down, it's because I have my laptop here, always forgetting things. So I did write down a lot of things here that I didn't want to forget to tell you guys. So like I said, if I keep on looking down, that is why. So now I'm just going to jump into the video because I know I can ramble on and talk a lot and I don't want this video to be super long. So I'm going to share with you guys a few things about autism, just in case you guys are not familiar with it. Autism is also referred to ASD, which stands for Autism Spectrum Disorder, which is basically a developmental disorder where the child has a lot of communication and also behavioral issues, and they also have a lot of repetitive behavior. Now, all ASD disorders are not the same, so just because my daughter is on the spectrum and I meet a fellow mom that also has a child who's on the spectrum, our child are not the same. Each child is different in their own ways. So there is low functioning and also high functioning disorders. So my child who's on the spectrum disorder is nonverbal. She does not communicate, she does not talk, but there's a lot of other children that are also on ASD, but they're able to talk and communicate and are verbals. So not all ASD disorders are the same. So I myself am still learning and researching myself about ASD. I'm always online Googling and I'm also always reading books on ASD. So I'm hoping I was able to explain ASD as best as possible or enough for you guys to at least understand it just a little bit. If you guys are still interested in learning more about ASD, I will leave a few links down below for you guys to read. I don't want to give you guys any false information because like I said, I am still learning myself. I'm just telling you guys the things that I already know and have already learned. So I'm now going to move on to my daughter and her update and where she was when she was first diagnosed and where she is now. So my daughter is four and a half years old. She will be five in April and she was diagnosed with ASD when she was two years old. So I'm gonna go down a list of things of just um, signs that I saw in her that made me think that she could have been autistic or made me suspicious about it. So I'll share with you guys all of that. So. The first thing was that she was extremely delayed in her milestones. Every time she would go to the pediatrician, she was always super, super delayed. She was never right on track where she was supposed to be. And I did compare her a lot to Ryan, which I know you should never compare your children with each other because every child is different whether or not they have a disorder or not. Each child is not gonna progress in the same type of milestones. So I should not have done that, but I did compare her a lot to Ryan and I would see where Ryan was at certain ages and I would see where she was. So I did do a lot of comparing, but she was um, extremely delayed in her milestones and even her pediatrician did say that as well. She had no type of eye contact, so you can literally be right in front of her face and you would be calling her name, you'd be talking to her and she would look everywhere but you. She would never acknowledge you or never look you in the eyes. Another sign was um, she didn't respond to her name as well. So you would call her and she would never turn around and look at you. She would never respond at all. No matter how many times you called her name or no matter how close you were to her, she would never acknowledge you when you called her name. Another thing was she barely ever smiled or interacted. So we would try to make her laugh. We would try to make her smile. Ryan would try to play with her. She never wanted to interact with Ryan or any other kids. She was always secluded like in her own area. And then, like I said, she just never smiled. Like I don't want to say she never smiled because she did smile sometimes, but it was very, very little. She barely ever gave us a smile or a laugh. She also wasn't affectionate at all. She hated any type of affection. Anytime we tried to give her hugs or kisses or cuddles, she would get super upset and start crying and screaming and throw a tantrum. So that was another thing that she just did not like. And I just figured maybe she just wasn't an affectionate child. But yeah, that was one of the things that she did not like. Another sign was she wasn't babbling or trying to talk at all. She was over one years old and she still would not babble at all. She was completely mute. So it was another sign. She also had a lot of repetitive behavior. 
she also rocked back and forth so she would sit down and she would just rock her body back and forth she also used to flap her hands a lot um she was always focused on one certain thing so she would play with the toy and she would always focus like on the tag or the eyeball and she would just be fixated on that one thing the entire time and would not play with the toy the way it should have been played with or play with any other toy she was always fixated on like one toy and one item on that toy she also wasn't pulling herself up or even trying to walk so she ended up not learning how to walk until she was over two i would say she was probably like two and a half when she actually started learning how to walk she never learned how to crawl she never crawls at all and i know some kids just overall just skip the crawling and go straight to walking but she wasn't even trying to pull herself up on like on a table or a couch so she did not learn how to walk until she was two and a half and the last and final thing that i can remember is her just getting easily frustrated over the smallest things she was always getting frustrated and i know a lot of kids can get frustrated but hers was just like over the top so those are all the things that I saw in her that made me suspicious that she could have been autistic or that something was wrong with her. So I did bring it up to her pediatrician that she had at the time. And her pediatrician honestly was pretty much no help. She kept on saying that she just felt like she was delayed and that maybe she should go to therapy just for the walking because she wasn't pulling herself up or crawling. So I took it upon myself to go ahead and research a bunch of doctors that diagnose kids with autism and also different disorders because I wanted to get to the bottom of it. I knew that there was something else wrong with her and I wanted to get her the help. So I ended up finding a doctor who lived in my area. There was a really long waiting list for a lot of the doctors. His um, doctor's office was the shortest waiting list, which was about four months um, of a waiting list. And it ended up working out fine just because when I found him, she wasn't quite two yet. And you cannot be diagnosed or tested for autism until you are two years old. So she still had about three months before she was going to turn two. So waiting the four months was fine. So I got put on the waiting list and then I went back to her pediatrician. I asked her pediatrician for all of her medical paperwork, all the milestones that she was delayed on. And then I told her she can add anything extra that she was concerned about. I brought those paperwork to the doctor and it was a three appointment process. It was really long. So the first appointment was just me answering a bunch of questions on a laptop. I was there for probably an hour. Second appointment, I had to sit in a room with the doctor and Madison, and he asked me a lot more questions, and then he also checked her out, um, and then he went through all of her medical paperwork. And then the third and last appointment was the longest one. That one was three hours, and Madison had to sit in a room with a specialist, and she worked on a bunch of things with Madison while the doctor watched from a camera. So we did an hour and a half, and then we had an hour break. We took lunch and then we came back and then she did the other hour and a half. And then after that, the doctor and the specialist went over the video. They watched the video and they went over all the paperwork, all the questions that I answered. And they called me back a few weeks later, letting me know that she was autistic. So that was the whole process of me getting her tested. So I am so glad that I went with my gut and I decided to take it upon myself to research doctors and get her tested because if I would have listened to her doctor, to her pediatrician, I don't know how old she would have been when she was finally diagnosed and the earlier the intervention, the better. So you mommies out there, if you feel like there's something wrong with your child, if you feel in your gut that there is something wrong and the doctor is telling you no, I would just take it upon myself and I would research and get your child the help that they need. But if I would have listened to Madison's original pediatrician, she probably would have lost out on probably months or even a year of the help that she's now getting. So I'm going to get into all the improvements that she has. Like I said, she is four and a half right now and she was diagnosed when she was two. So the first thing is... So the first thing is obviously she is walking now. She learned how to walk when she was... Over two and a half years old, she finally started walking. Second thing is she responds to her name. So when you call her name, she actually looks at you. She knows her name. So when you call her, she acknowledges you. Another thing is eye contact. She is doing so much better with eye contact. She makes eye contact with you when you are looking at her or talking to her. She looks at you. Sometimes she can be a typical toddler and she won't want to look at you and she'll ignore you. But for the most part, she is making eye contact. Um, she also smiles a lot now, which she barely ever smiled before and now she will give you a smile. She's much more affectionate. She's still not super affectionate, I would say, but she's definitely more affectionate than what she was when she was a baby. Um, another thing is 
she does babble now and sometimes I feel like she is trying to talk or trying to communicate. She also sometimes will let you know what she wants. So let's say that there is a bag of snacks on the kitchen counter and she wants that. She will bring your hand and put it towards that bag. So she is trying to communicate. Also, her therapist is um, teaching her some sign language. So she knows a few signs. So she'll sign for more sometimes. So there is a few things that she is learning in sign language that she sometimes uses. Um, she will sometimes socialize with Ryan, which she never used to when she was younger. Sometimes when Ryan wants to play with her, she will interact with him or smile and laugh at him, whatever he's doing. Doesn't last very long. She usually still likes to be in her own little bubble, but she will sometimes socialize with Ryan, which is such a great feeling. So the last two things that she has improved on, but we still are trying to work on is flapping her hands and also rocking back and forth. So she still does flap her hands and she still will rock back and forth. It's just not as consistent or as much as she used to. So we're still trying to work on that. But like I said, she used to do it all the time, all day. And now she only does it maybe a few times throughout the day. Another thing though, that she has started doing probably maybe last year or a few months ago is hitting herself. So she never used to do that when she was a baby. And I would say maybe about a year ago, she started hitting herself and she mostly does that when she's super upset. Um, and I'm thinking it's because since she's not verbal and she cannot talk, she cannot really communicate with me when she wants something or something is bothering her and she can't tell me, vocalize that, she gets frustrated and she hits herself. So that is one thing that is new that we are also trying to work on. I don't wanna jinx it, but she hasn't done it for probably like a week or two, but she will get into these moments where she's super frustrated and she'll start hitting herself and then I have to try and calm her down. Now, if you are wondering if my daughter will be one of the kids that are able to communicate and talk eventually down the line, the answer is, I don't know, maybe, because the doctor who diagnosed her gave her a 50-50 chance of being able to talk. So he said there's a very high chance that she will never be able to talk and never be able to communicate, but that there's a really high chance that she will be able to learn how to talk with speech therapy and us working with her at home. So, I'm going to stay confident and I'm going to keep on saying my prayers and hopefully one day I believe that she will be able to talk and start communicating because I feel there's so many times where she's looking at me and she's babbling and I feel like she really is trying to talk. It's just hard for her to get it out. So I'm very hopeful that hopefully one day she will be able to talk and communicate with us. So yeah, that's just the answer to that. I know a lot of you guys were wondering if... um she'll ever be able to talk. So the answer is hopefully with lots of prayers and lots of therapy. All right guys, so that is going to end my daughter Madison's autism update. I really hope I didn't confuse any of you guys. Like I mentioned earlier, me myself, I'm still learning so much about the ASD disorder. I'm always going online and researching ways that I can help her out at home. So I hope I didn't confuse any of you guys and I hope you guys found this video helpful and answered all of your questions. I'm always getting a ton of questions on my daughter and her update. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys are not already subscribed to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. It would mean so much to me if you joined me and my YouTube family. And as always, I just wanna say thank you so much for all of your support to each and every one of my subscribers. I really do appreciate you guys. You guys are awesome and I love all the support here on YouTube. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye. All right guys, so now that the video is over, I thought it was only necessary to have the star of the topic make an appearance. So if you guys are new to my channel and you've never seen my daughter or have never met her, this is Madison. Madison, look, Maddie, can you say hi to everyone? Say hi. We're talking about you. We're talking about you. Can you say hi? So this is my daughter, Madison. She is four and a half years old, yeah. It shall be five in April, and this is who we were talking about. Can you say hi? Can you say anything to them? Can you say hi, friends? Can you say hi, friends? <laughs> yeah. You've been shy. All right, guys, so I just want her to make a quick appearance since we were talking about her and the video was all about her. I had to include her in the video. I would have had her in the video with me, like sitting next to me or on my lap, but there is no way she would have kept still. She would have been on my laptop pressing buttons or whining. So that is why she wasn't in the video while I was talking, but she definitely needed to make her own appearance. Say so the video's over now.
Say bye. Subscribe to Mama's channel. Subscribe to Mommy's channel.